catch up on all the live shows right here on africatechradio.com. Welcome guys to Cruise Control. My name is Buki, your host as usual. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Africa Tech Radio. We are Africa's number one technology radio reporting technological advancements in Africa. And we do this every day, Monday to Friday. And on this show, I love to take the trending stories, the hot topics, hot takes, uh, what's hot, everything bubbling in the tech ecosystem and landscape and of course nigeria yesterday it was democracy day and a new president uh for nigeria president tunumbu bola ahmed yes and of course people are raising conversation around what they expect especially in the tech ecosystem nigerians are actually saying sharing with what bola tunumbu needs to do for the industry of crypto and of course uh, looking at the review on e-sports as a way to bring in some money to generate some money for people involved in it in nigeria to why more investors should jump on gamers in nigeria and of course what the netflix crackdown means for nigerians i'm doing this today just checking around what nigerians are feeling right now because there's a new president in town i don't want to say sheriff in town a new president in town and people are trying to get the best out of this leadership out of his tenor and of course looking at rwanda's impressive e-government initiative maybe there's a thing or two we can actually learn from it and of course something happening to spotify spotify is going through some dragging yes (laughs) spotify has been dragged And they are being fined in Sweden over data access complaints. All of this I'll be going through in the next couple of minutes to hours. And I want to say welcome to the show. We're definitely going to have a great time. And let's get the show rolling, 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 rolling. And of course, in Nigeria here, we are off to a great start with the administration of Bola Ahmed Tunubu as the president. And of course, the crypto world, they are looking at a blue sky. They want everything to go smooth for them. And they're looking at the benefit they could gain from the administration and putting forward some of their expectations from this administration. If you look at the, the, the since May 29th, a lot of announcement has been made in regards to policies geared towards revitalization of the country's uh, economy trying to make sure that we, we revive the economy subsidy has been raised off from our fuel and of course some other strategies and policies are being shaked up to make sure that the economy is bouncing back however there are still no cut clear strategy around the crypto industry and these people don't want to be ignored anymore so they they are looking for ways that bola tunumbu can work alongside the blockchain guys so if you remember the president muhammadu buhari's administration he cracked down on crypto usage in the country and of course also there was a ban on crypto transaction in the nigerian banking system but right now the the new administration is looking promising and they are having a renewal of hope that the era of president bola ahmed Tinubu is going to bring about prominent figures in the nigerian crypto space I, I I like this hope. I like how they are kind of positive, positive. Because no matter what, you don't give up until you get the results that you really need. You do not, do not, do not give up. No going down, no going back. You keep going after what you need. So the guys are actually uh, putting forward ideas or what they would like this um, administration. They call him Bat. Yes, Bola Ahmed Tunumbu. So you can call our president Bat president but <laughs> so the nigerian crypto and blockchain industry is set on a trajectory to grow and dominate the economy if the government makes the right move to facilitate the process so what they are looking at is they're urging the new government to promote a free market economy to propel the growth of nigerian businesses and organization and of course uh, in calculations they they believe that the economic system can also help regulate the price for fluctuation and instability that has plagued the country or the nation so far 
I know if you're if you're someone who have been interested in blockchain and maybe you're a trader or you're an active uh, participant on the crypto landscape, you definitely be aware of some of the rigid laws or policies that have been cracked down in the past two three years, I guess. But then, Bari actually made a step in driving inclusion and innovation in the country, especially around the, the blockchain industry. But this current administration, they are hopeful, is going to drive the success and further lift the CBN ban on cryptocurrency tra- transaction in commercial banks. Also, uh, Senator Ian, who is also the lead partner and head of blockchain and virtual asset practice, also an infusion lawyer, he said... He wants to address the elephant in the room, which is cryptocurrency and its usage. He said, first, the Tunumbu administration should leverage the approved national blockchain policy to get the Central Bank of Nigeria to immediately withdraw or review the illegal cryptocurrency directive of 5th February 2021. Secondly, he said the Tunumbu administration should help ensure the Money Laundering Act 2022 which recognizes virtual assets and requires virtual asset service providers to embrace anti-robbery laundering compliance should be allowed to operate and thirdly as promised to the electorate e actually saying this that we expect the tunubu administration to implement its plan of establishing an advisory committee that will introduce policy reforms in the digital asset sector towards creating a more efficient and business-friendly uh, framework. So um, th- these are things are in the world of the senator who is like the immediate past president of stakeholders in the Blockchain Association of Nigeria. And uh, looking at how they've been putting this whole thing together and collecting capital gain tax from the crypto sector on one hand and stifling crypto businesses on the other and so he decided to put these three expectations before the new president he further suggested that the nigerian security and exchange commission should have a clear court rule so they don't operate by trial and error so he said enable guys who are playing in the blockchain space to be able to explore experiment and start ideas to enable the country to maximize the full impact of the blockchain strategy for me i think uh it's a good space it's a good landscape for people because uh, the adoption of blockchain product especially cryptocurrency in the country is moving so fast and there's so much that could be gained from this uh, the countries are looking at africa at uh, the continent you know nigeria is one of the highest crypto adoption rates uh in the world so we should actually have a space where it's fair enough for our traders and blockchain players to to trade to play and of course uh bringing more generate more for the economy in nigeria i think it's a good way to go but some of the irregularities and unclear rules needs to be uh worked on with the new administration and of course they are hoping that the president Bola Ahmed Tunubu could address this proposition and of course place the country in the right direction where they are able to trade and use the blockchain system with the commercial banks uh more stories but first let's go back to music and i'll come back to talk about esports what it means for nigeria at the moment yes uh looking at the esports area and you know yesterday i talked about how we have different tech obsession i'm obsessed with my phone right now i don't want to say i'm obsessed with social media so what are you obsessed with what are you obsessed with I think you should listen to that episode where I talked about tech obsession because a lot of us have different obsession around technology. The most fascinating one is people who visit adult sites and can't help it. Yes, it's a tech obsession because of the internet has made it very available to you guys. So you just can't help it. I know you're sh- you're ashamed of saying that you're obsessed with uh, sneaking to go watch some adult films and all that stuff. Another tech obsession was the gaming world because people are obsessed with gaming, especially guys. Yes, I know majority of you are you just want to compete you want to have that adrenaline rush the pleasure of winning i don't know do girls feel that i don't know 
we we just like to slay even even techies like texas they like to just you know stay calm slay live the soft life but you see guys the way they used to just rush around playing games betting even betting is one of the tech obsession that people struggle with but right now the state of the esports in nigeria was it looking like gaming is an obsession for guys majority of guys uh because some of like stop general Generalizing. I'm not generalizing. Mm? I've been around guys for too long to know. Yes. So esports, from betting to football to fighting to a lot of different games that guys just enjoy. I don't know the adrenaline rush they get from competing against each other. Back in the days, as Africans, they enjoy combating with each other for to know who is the strongest who is the you know lion of the jungle even they come back to get a girlfriend Mm -hmm. i remember when african nollywood i was watching the king had to fight to win the girl and who would want to beat the no the prince who would want to beat the prince so he actually fought with a guy who was also interested in the same lady and uh, it was a brawl a, a bad one but the the prince won i know i know the story wasn't going to end the way you thought but then guys just enjoy uh anything that has to do with competition they are very edgy in that direction but right now uh when you look at the the tech world the esports is becoming the buzzword because in nigeria like like i said the betting world has really grown so big and of course when you look at south africa they have their lintonga and in Nigeria, they have Ayo. In Ghana, they have Ampe, uh, where people, the African kids just go to pass their time. I remember growing up, like, the boys in my area, because my house was all girls. Uh, so the boys, they usually just hang around the cafe. To You think maybe they want to come and check what's happening on the internet. They're basically just playing sport on their phone. There's this one. My sister used to play it. It's like a snipe something. They throw stones like rough edges. I'm going to ask my sister for the name because she was more into those tomboy lifestyle. So she usually plays those games then. But it was just few games on computers because people were still trying to navigate their ways around internet. But thanks to the internet right now, there are so many games that you could actually play with people far away from you. And there was the emergence of video games console like the Sega, the PlayStation, Xbox, and handheld uh, console like Nintendo. Oh, there was this one, Pokemon, you know, where people were going crazy. I was wondering if Nigeria would tap into that, but a lot of people abroad were going crazy over Pokemon. And uh, <laughs> But thank God we didn't go, we didn't go that extent. But then gaming is still a thing. And eSports right now is blowing up over here especially in Nigeria. My colleague had an interview about uh, what it feels like in the eSports tournaments, inside Africa's biggest eSports tournament. So if you're really interested in eSports, you might want to listen to that on Tech Talks with Lillian, uh, where they talk about what's big and what's happening when we look at the e tournaments, eSport tournaments in Africa. And of course, uh, there was also an interview she did about the best phones that could be used for gaming. Uh, I know, I know. You guys have been wondering, what phone can I get? Because most ladies are looking for phones with the finest, sharpest camera. But guys are looking for the capability of the phone to withstand the game software. Yeah? Yes. I know you know these things. It's just that I'm just saying the same thing to you, Abby. I know. So let's move on to what the state of esports in Nigeria is at the moment because there's a new new president in town. And of course, people are looking at how they're opening gaming shops where kids could just spend hours on ending and trying to pass difficult missions. For me, the highest I've ever done with gaming would be Candy Crush. <laughs> I stopped at 100 and something. I can't remember 100 and something. I couldn't even make it to one. I was looking forward to make it to 111, but I didn't. I didn't. Trust me. I know people who made it to 200 and even 500. Can you imagine? 
Well, technology has revolutionized the scene for gaming and transforming players or foreign titles into game developers. Uh, you can see this example with the CEO of Mechan Games, who was actually a gamer and became African game developer. He participated in a five-month game development accelerator in Cape Town. And as a result, we'll have it. He won and... It rose to the top of the Android download chart last year. So the African game title have also begun appearing on Google Play Store and the iOS Store. And a trend in spotlighting that the com- continent is rich in that regard and heritage. I know, I say regards all the time. Yeah. So Ethiopia also have an Ethiopian-based game development studio with <laughs> Aki and Popo Epic Run. A creation by Nigerian studio Blue Portal are also in the run and interestingly electronic sports which is the e-sport is a new segment that adds a competitive flavor to gaming and is becoming one of the biggest and fastest growing industry in the world that's the reason why you need to listen to the interview on tech talks with inside africa's biggest e-sports tournament with lillian and of course the ceo and co-founder of game r you have to just jump on our website www.africatechradio.com which is where you're listening to me from right now and check our list of shows go to tech talk with lillian and of course catch on with the episode of inside africa's biggest e-sport tournament and on youtube we also have an interesting conversation around the best smartphone to use for gaming also a conversation you would definitely enjoy it's fun it's uh it takes us back in time to all the games we played i mean when i was watching the episode i was like yes i remember mario then you fall then you die and mario was hectic for me it was fun i could not move past the phone i just couldn't yes so um the esport right now people are claiming esports to be the new oil for the continent and of course especially for nigeria so they're looking at how games have traditionally been played for fun but it happens that multiple player competition and with reward now meets with online streaming technology uh the e-game is falling into the full uh full category of first person shooter multiple player battle arena and real-time strategy and of course the prize money you i remember in my former colleague would always call his friend and during lunch or break time would call his friends to jump on on their game and they'll be playing and screaming at each other while speaking to each other i'm like this is so fun i used to see this on uh movies but right now you guys are enjoying it how amazing is technology and the penetration of technology into africa has changed so many things i think i'm the last person that is going to tap on because i need i don't even know what aspect of technology i need to be so in tune with my blood and veins everything with aside the microwave warming my food because when i get home i'm so exhausted and i just go boom boom and i'll get my food and i eat and i go so i don't know it, what would they do maybe provide me a husband robot husband yes uh, <laughs> moving away from the conversation and moving back into the conversation around esports yes so there's prize money that makes people to engage and of course selling up tickets for revenue generating money there's also sponsorship and advertisement and of course the prize being split among top performers in the competition so which makes people very eager to jump on any esporting uh platform and looking at how it's been going the viewers also can watch players live from anywhere across the globe so if they don't want to partake as the player they can also be a partaker in watching how people play i had a partner back then who usually play poker yeah so from his phone he was just telling me oh babe pray for me i'm I'm going into this uh tournament and i have to play against 16 people and meet up uh to a particular number and he's going to earn a particular amount per day but i just could not understand because i've had somebody who was addicted to gambling and i just could not deal that was not the reason why we broke up 
you're getting too too much in my business yes so let's move back to interesting fact about the esports it has a sizable followership in africa with 21 countries from the continent belonging to the international esports federation so they're growing 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 big if they've conquered 21 countries out of 54 i mean they're doing something good and of course settling in nigeria they are doing something around bringing people together to compete in some elite contests like game rx of course this is going to drive me into the conversation happening this weekend game rs competition is going to be live and of course africa tech radio is going to be there live and reporting our very own lillian is going to be showing up to represent us i know see i'll tell her the spot to play if there's ludo play if there's io play any other thing i'm not involved i'm not backing you or uh? yeah so they're going to be having the event this weekend game rx for all the game lovers come out in many come out in thousands come out in clicks uh come out and play and win some money and of course uh see what you can do the thrill of the experience from the competitive nature of gaming and of course streaming on the internet people can watch other gamers compete against each other and of course uh the event is going to be having people coming in in large numbers and of course the bigger moment to enjoy and relish in which can't be taken for granted i like i like the thrill of people screaming yes oh no i almost got it yeah ah see you i just feel sorry for you if i don't kick you since if i don't blow your head off all those kind of things I, yeah we are, we are africans we, once we're in that element people most time forget english or people will just be laughing i just say sorry for your papa if not if i don't deal with you or oh, no worry six one six one we go again i mean i'm coming for you oh it's always fun when when the guys are in that element i know i know what i love about esports is that It's a do or die affair for the gamers, meaning the competition is extremely high and you just have to come prepared or just come into the tournament to get the experience. Like I said, I love the trills. Just kind of makes me realize that people are trying to get better and they work towards it. That's one thing I always hear about guys that they always try their best. Even while they are beating them 6-1, they are still having mouths to talk. How can somebody be beating you 6-1? I are you still saying you're feeling sorry for the person's papa? Eh? Just take your L in peace and restart the game. So, guys, come out in your numbers. Come and watch the guys compete against each other at the Game R event. Game RX event happening this weekend. We'll put up more details on our social at ATEC radio on instagram and africa tech radio on twitter and of course facebook so i'm moving on to the next story which is netflix cracking down on the password this one i've been talking about it since last year because it pain me i'm not gonna lie it pain me so much like i'll be sharing password with someone my ah, i'm always exposing myself on this show so my ex is brother who lives abroad i share password with with him or with them <laughs> rather it's a family affair then when the relationship ended password sharing ended then my friend who was gracious enough shared password with me and now netflix decided to crack down on password sharing meaning that i have to go back to my old neglected account and pay oh uh, this one pain me and to think that there are new movies right now that i want to binge watch or i want to sit back relax and just enjoy a good time netflix and chill with myself because i'm well by myself yeah so what does this mean the netflix crackdown on the password sharing what does it mean for nigerians what does it mean for africa they've actually extended the club down for nigeria because they've been take they've been taking it country by country and uh, right now the clamp down sharing of accounts in the u.s seems to be like paying off because people get to pay for their viewing so they don't have so many users using one account they have people using one area code their vpn and outside that the other people get to pay so the the streaming giant netflix also extended the clamp down to nigeria and every one of its subscribers on the africa continent is going to have to pay 
pay the money. Yes. So just days after Netflix began its notifying its US customers of changes regarding password sharing, the streaming service also received almost 100,000 signs up on each of those two days because people still want to watch movie and have a good time chilling and doing the other things. Are you still watching? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, meanwhile, during the period from May 25th through May 28th, there was a lot of sign-ups averaging over 73,000, marking up uh, a 102% increase from the prior of um, how people have been subscribing. And right now, the streaming giant is informing subscribers that it will begin cracking down on viewers who share someone else's account from the second quarter. And of course, after it beats their earning estimates for the first quarter, but offered a lighter than expected forecast, meaning that they've been making money, but it's been going so, so far. I mean, they really want to make money. The company also informed customers that anyone outside their household who had access to their accounts would need to be added as an extra user and pay extra money which is eight dollar per month i'm a nigerian in black market rates 750 times eight is almost four thousand something you get it that's the amount we pay per month so now instead of paying four thousand and sharing with about three four users only you and yourself and maybe your partner can actually use that aside that anybody who is far away can't use or share the account so like i said me that was sharing with my ex's brother family affair i can't have that privilege anymore so in case the new guy that is coming password is actually on my list so if you click that list check i'm so cheap i know yes <laughs> so right now nigerians are finding out about this netflix is predicting that its revenue and growth would actually be boosted further by the plans to charge customers involved in uh, password sharing starting from the second half of the year and they are looking at netflix nigeria i've also absolutely enjoyed them they're on my social i'm following them on instagram so when uh the new movies came like the last one was gang of lagos the rave i like how they did their marketing all of those things i really really like it so i'm all for it that no more sharing of password because they put in a lot of work and seeing how the movies have gotten so better and better and better and better so if there's one thing nigerians and the rest of africa should be bracing up for in the coming months it's uh the increase in the subscription cost or rates they have a projected revenue netflix also are thinking of making more money so they are going to definitely raise their subscription prices towards the second half of the year and if this happens i'm sure that some nigerians will have to go to iweka road on the chart to get their movies <laughs> oh my goodness because right now, most most movies want to just jump on Netflix to get larger audience, larger views. And always know at the back of your mind that whatever your money you're paying to Netflix, you're also contributing to the actors, the producers who put down effort to make sure that these movies are a success from the quality. I mean, you can't deny the fact that Nigerians are putting more efforts in the quality of their production they put in efforts in how uh they give us storylines before eh, the storylines is always the same the wicked stepmother kind of storyline especially yoruba or babalawo they like abali's situation oh chineke i'll just be watching that i'll be like please can they just stop being i mean they are quite traditional but this is like the 20th or 21st century let's do something modern and yeah you know those ghosts they will show ghosts wearing white and rub powder on their face ah, we're not stupid oh. but right now netflix has changed everything we can now get storylines that are current with us uh seeing some life situations couples dealing with their sit situation young boys young girls like me that they handle their business on the streets you know I, I really like it so i'm definitely going to put my money on netflix if you ask me as long as it helps me get quality production 
from the movies I enjoy or the producers, definitely, definitely looking at that one because they to get a good percentage from using the platform. So it's a win-win for everybody, three of us. People putting their movie on uh, Netflix, Netflix the company, and me myself. You see, win-win for everybody. I know it's not easy because I'm saying no more password sharing. Some of now, and I like a woof. I woof the porch belle. <laughs> I'm so local. I know. I'm very, very. So that's it, guys. So if you're looking at the clamp down on the password sharing, get ready with your pockets because Netflix might just might just be increasing their subscription cost. Mm? I don't know how that sounds. Not so good, but so good at the moment. So I'm just reporting the information I heard on the street. So it don't be like say that we they run this down. Now we they run this down and we're not letting you know what's up. I'm bringing you the 411 from the streets. And Netflix, of course, is happening to all of us. And of course, looking at Rwanda. Yeah. One of the most impressive things they did for me was actually giving out laptops to the teachers to empower them towards educating students and the children in rwanda and right now we're looking at how they are actually working towards the e-government initiative they have plans for completing their digitization of public services and closing the gaps between citizen and governance so Rwanda is actually an East African country and their digital transformation is uh, growing gradually. I don't want to say rapidly because they're taking it gradually, gradually. They're climbing. Uh, they had a target of registering over 400 services right now, but they've made it to 103. And this was actually a remarkable process for them, considering if you know about Rwanda, you know they've been through a lot and they're currently striving to be at the forefront of innovation also, which I applaud them because they didn't allow their situation to let their back on the ground. I'll be out today to say those things, Seth. No, let your background drop your back for ground. Yes, I'm sure you'll try to decipher that later. Let it marinate. No, let your background drop your back for ground. Yes, that's what Rwanda has actually been doing. They've not allowed their situation and seeing that they're really trying. I've had everyone this friend and I, I understand where they're coming from. Um, although they've actually had uh, to work with a company named Rembo alongside the, the Minister of ICT. They talked about offering access to the 103 services and this is a project that is going to be worth 12 million dollars in hopes to ensure that rwanda meets with its target their drug they are going to be using 12 million dollars i wish this is going to be enough for them however the problem like was mentioned in the other episode where i talked about them giving out laptops to teachers was on low ict literacy so this is something they are still struggling with because they need to educate their people about the importance of this digital transformation initiative and also how they can actually utilize the platforms that they're offering and of course they also struggle with poor telecom infrastructure which is by the way the rwanda e-government program is seeking to tackle corruption and perhaps most importantly help transform the low-income nation into a middle-income one by 2035 that's their target in 2035 you might be hearing about rwanda as uh, one of the front runner for technological innovation and they are looking to also transform their low income area also the you no know, technology comes into the place and more money comes in so these people are looking to catch up catch up catch up catch up they also have some other objectives uh for their national strategy transformation but according to the united nations e-government survey rwanda for the first time was recognized as a country with high level of e-governance in 2022 it was joined with zimbabwe south africa Cote d'Ivoire, and of course uh they are at the newcomers to that category so uh rwanda's at the new cost uh commas welcome 
I don't want to say on Abi JJC, but welcome, welcome, welcome. It's worth also noting that South Africa, Mauritius, Seychelles, Tunisia, Morocco make up the top five list of African countries with high level of e-governance development. I remember also taking uh, the story on how we are trying to register Nigerians and uh, we're yet to meet the marks because women would not just come out and go and register so encourage your sisters encourage your mom encourage your wives your girlfriends your colleagues encourage them to go register and have their data digitalized on the system so that's what Rwanda is trying to do right now and of course create a platform where People can enjoy 103 services. Ah, oh, there's no list of what the services are, but if properly implemented, I'm sure they would have benefits for both citizens and the authority. And of course, uh, they should just work alongside with the government to see where this is going to lead to. There's also um, a document from the African Union about this saying the use of shared services and infrastructure would contribute in reducing the cost of investment across governments and also uh, regarding to residents they also add that having a single government portal a whole of government service catalog with interoperable system in the back end improves user experience on access to services i think nigeria should be on that list though because we don't try a major reason why Rwanda is attempting to digitize their government services is for to be better than many African countries and of course to actually boost their government owned product. Also, they are looking at the public and private sector for collaborative efforts, which is going to allow both parties to share associated risk and increase the project chances of longevity. I think for me, it's actually good. It's actually good that they are looking at how this is going to go around. It's not just a, it's only government doing it because government wants to benefit. They're also looking at how they can have the private stakeholders also be a part of this. Uh, Rwanda is aiming for 400 plus digital services by next year. And uh, the country hopes to match that ambition with improved telecom infrastructure. Go guys, go guys, work on this, work on this, uh, improve the infrastructure for telecommunication. And of course, the ICT literacy program also should be in place where citizens are educated about how to utilize most of these products and take advantage of it because there is so much that can come into the country. Me, I'm all for everybody. I'm for everyone. <laughs> Don't say for no one. I'm for everyone. So I like citizens to be sensitized about what's the new thing or the new big thing that is around them because you don't want to be ignorant to something good around you while you complain and whine about things that are not working. There's just things working around you, but you don't know how to operate it or you don't know what are the benefits of these things. So you just ignore it or walk past it or just, uh, you know how people used to do now, have some fears at the back of your mind that uh, they are going to impede on my privacy or the government is going to tax me for running my business online or my data is just going to be available and it's just going to be out there trust me all this is for the good of the country so shout out to rwanda for the e-government initiative that they are trying to run looking forward to 2035 where they are going to be among the top runners in africa basically they're looking to help transform their low income nation into a middle income one by 2035 meaning more money is going to come into the nation if you've actually been to rwanda you would understand most of these things i've said because uh they are just a growing nation at the moment they've actually they've been through a lot trust me they've been through a lot when it comes to the government's reign and policies so right now i wish them all the best uh spotify spotify now my guy because i listen to music i listen to podcasts and i just have a fun time maybe when i'm in the shower or 
on my commute to work i spend my time with spotify so anything with touch spotify it touched me so spotify got fined in sweden over uh data access complaints so the music streaming giant spotify uh got fined around five million euro after it was accused of breaching the data access rights of users in the european union by not providing full information about personal data it processes in response to individual requests you know when you go into a country there's also a data protection right there's actually a breach of article 15 of the general data protection regulation that comes more than four years after a complaint was lodged against spotify by the privacy rights not for profit and the complaint was filed to start at 2019 alleged that spotify failed to provide adequate details in response to the complaint subject access request i think one thing that has been trending lately is how people can now just sue uh tech giants companies social media platforms you can just take them to court based on data breach data is king guys data is king because you think that your information that you have is irrelevant trust me hmm? your personal data can actually generate so much revenue that you have no idea of so they're suing in uh, this regard of data breach and they have to pay <laughs> so in a statement by a privacy lawyer named stefano rosetti he said we are glad to see that the swedish authority finally took action it is a basic right of every user to get full information on the data that it processed about them however the case took more than four years and we had to uh, litigate the imri to get a decision the swedish authority definitely has to speed up its procedure meaning they delayed the whole process and everything but not with no withstanding they are taking the actions that they needed to have taken since four years ago but in a statement here the swedish authority for privacy protection imy has also investigated spotify's general procedure for handling access requests and have found some shortcomings related to the information that should be provided to the individual making the request pursuant to article 15 versus one <laughs> so they're actually saying there was no sufficient clear information to individuals in the regard and the decision includes violation of data rights basically so investigation was also encompassed and occurred in three different complaints and uh, they've they just gave this really long 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 write-up and of course spotify offers all users comprehensive information about how personal data is processed during the investigation the swedish dpa found only minor errors for the process and they believe needs more improvement however they do not agree with the decisions uh, or plan to file an appeal so five years running and this is all happening to spotify dear spotify i know i know this is a lot for you baby uh do handle your business and don't forget don't stop giving us great content and allowing us to stream as much content as we would love uh talk to you guys tomorrow same time midday all the way to 3 p.m and of course it's cruise control catch up with more episode on www.africatechradio.com or a tech radio on instagram and africa tech radio on twitter facebook and of course you can find us in the clouds but for now bye bye catch you see ya later thanks for listening and don't forget to catch up on all the live shows right here on africatechradio.com